Ever since you can remember, you felt something in your chest telling you to move, to love, to speak, to try. Day after day, you pretend you don't hear it calling, or maybe you dismiss it as silliness or worse. But it's there, ready for you, and it will wait for you as long as you need. My name is Johnny G, and I invite you to join me on a journey of awakening as we dare to embrace our light. This is Refractive. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Refractive. I'm your host, Johnny G. Today, I'm joined by Mariko Sakai. She is a businesswoman, coach, thought leader, TEDx speaker, and light worker. She focuses on helping people wake up from societal expectations and reorient to a truly authentic life. She herself lives an alternative lifestyle. She's a certified coach in sex, love, relationships, conscious dating, tantric intimacy, women's empowerment, and ethical BDSM. She's trained in human design, EFT, co-creative science, and she is my wonderful guest today. Welcome, Mariko. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Johnny, for having me. It was an honor. It's a joy. You know, and today we're here to talk about your area of specialization, um, relationships, sexuality, and the rich personal growth and spiritual development that's available to that part of our life. And I I think it's a really interesting topic. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much here. (laughs) Why do you think this was an area of focus uh, that you moved into? Why? Hmm. You know, I am not sure, but maybe I feel like part of the reason why it has to do with the fact that I, since I was like a little girl, I always kind of identify as not fitting in. You know, I was not like a typical girl. It was more than just like a tomboy type thing. Um, so I feel like there is a part of me just kind of always aware of who I am, but not really feeling like I fit into like a typical girl box. Um, and also not wanting to growing up, not wanting to, uh, fit into that box as a way of kind of, um, you know, as a woman, uh, like growing up in Japanese society, there is, and in, in any society, there is this uh, sexism and, you know, women should be this, a girl should be like that, and a boy should be like this. And I never really fit in. But also, I did not want to grow up to be a adult woman where I am, you know, lesser than men or like I'm less successful than men. Or I wanted to make sure that I am, you know, Uh, very successful in every way Mm -hmm. and don't fit into this typical kind of like, you know, like a submissive or like lesser role, if you will, for a woman. Um, So there is like intentional, like I was kind of a natural born that like a different girl, but also like there is a always, I, I want to be like this. There is a very clear picture of, that too so I was always kind of aware of this what society was expecting of me but who I really am and then just kind of always kind of aware of that kind of a balance or the the misalignment between the two you know it sounds like your your coaching journey um is a has a parallel to mine um when I had I guess what I call a spiritual awakening and and that empowered me to stop living my life according to what I was taught my life should look like Mm 
you know, I, I was able to step away from my traditional career and instead do things that felt good to my spirit. I was able to change the nature of my relationships with people, walk away with individuals that darkened my spirit, even if society says I had an obligation to spend, to be with them. Um, I, my, my, my spirit told me, no, leave. And I did. And, um, and as I felt the refreshment of living this way, I all of a sudden wanted to help other people feel that way too. And it sounds like what you do for a living in helping people, especially in the niche of relationships, is an outpouring of your own journey and what you learn to help yourself. And now maybe you want to provide that, that support to other people on the same journey. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And then so... I attract the people who basically conform to the society's expectations yeah. and then they are successful doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was very successful, quote unquote, as yeah. well. Uh, but then, you know, like after a while, I realized, oh, my God, am I happy? Hmm. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yep, yep, yep. How can I be so unhappy when I've done everything right? That exactly. was the question I had. Why am I unhappy? I did what I was supposed to. I My job looks like it was supposed to. My relationships look like they're supposed to. Like everything in my life, I've architected it based on what I've, I've been taught. Why doesn't it feel good? Like it was... Mm -hmm baffling to me. It felt so unfair. It felt like I had to be so damaged in order to not enjoy a life that looked like it should be right. Mm -hmm. And in reality, yeah. it was not right. It was somebody else's right. It wasn't my right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then the somebody else is probably don't exist, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I love that. So I love that you're on this journey and I love that you dedicate your your life to helping people um, arrive at that same beautiful realization as you did. So why don't we dig right into this topic? It's it's a rich one. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that you mentioned to me is that you feel very passionate about inviting people to be honest with themselves about what they want and what they don't want. And I have to tell you, Mariko, like this is, this is, this is my, this is a refractive podcast message. I have one, I have one episode that's literally called be honest with yourself. Um, and I have this message of like, really respect what you want and what you don't want and move toward it. I've talked about that quite a bit. So I I'm excited to revisit this topic with you. Um, what do you mean by that? And 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 how can someone get honest with themselves about what they want or what they don't want? Yeah, this is actually quite difficult. <laughs> I find, and I'm an honest person. I, you know, I, you know, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Like, well, what can I do? I'm already honest, you know. So it's actually. It requires, in my experience, it requires looking in the areas that I was not willing to look at. Mm. That it, that's where it comes down to. Mm. And um, I became passionate about this, looking in and basically shadow and in, you know dark areas that I possessed, but I, that that but I still possess. Yeah. But I was choosing to not look at it because I'm a successful person. Yes. I'm a good person. And I don't, you know, I can just kind of pretend these things don't exist about me. Yes. Right. And then so I almost forget, like I even have these things over here. But the reality is that I just kind of put them aside, try not to look at them, pretend that they don't exist. That's not part of me. No, 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 that's not, no, 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 no. I'm successful. I'm a good person here, you know? So this is the way I live my life, almost all of my life. Yes. 
And then I did everything that I know to be successful, right? I mean, I took all the training, I have a degree, I have, I speak multiple languages, all of these things. Like, and then I was still not happy. Yes. I was feeling empty and I was feeling very misaligned about who I am. And I did not know what was wrong. Um, and then so what I that the reason why I became so passionate about and then the reason why, you know, this becoming honest with yourself can be hard is because you are most likely, and like I was, working so hard to be right, to have this great life, become happy and successful in all of this. And so intentionally we are not looking at these areas, this shadow, dark areas. And like I said, I almost forgot that I had these things. And, you know, it kind of feels scary because we don't look at these areas because I feel shame. I'm fearful that I cannot believe it's part of me. Right. So to kind of invite people to be honest, that's really what I mean by look at purposely the areas where I've chosen to not look at, like turn the blind eye, right. pretend it doesn't exist. And so like, let's apply this to the world of relationships because listen, you and I, we could talk all day long about like hidden rage or like hidden greed or like all of these kind of shadow sides. But if we're talking specifically about relationships in our everyone's individual orientation towards relationship status, whether I'm someone that prefers being single, prefers being married, prefers being in an open relationship, prefers just dating, whatever that is. You know, when you talk about getting honest with yourself about what you want and don't want, how does that apply to my romantic life? Um, that is a really, really big question. Um, so. I would say that it is such a core of you yeah. that these like love and and then sex and relationship. Um and because we're spoon fed, like we're told, you know, well, I mean, you're not married in your in your late 30s. I mean, something's wrong. Uh-huh. That's yes, the that's exactly. the quiet messaging. I mean, in some homes that might not be quiet messaging. That might be direct messaging. Uh in, in in my home, like that's not really, you know, that's never spoken, but certainly in my society, it's like, yeah, you're single and you're 42 and you've never been in a relationship. So what's wrong? Mhm. Mm yes. That's, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then um so where I grew up in Japan, uh, you know, there is this analogy of like for women, like, a, oh, you know, woman, you know, you don't want to be a Christmas cake. Well, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> after the 25, no one wants you. Oh, my so, God. yeah. Yeah. This is a joke, you know, but it, it, it's really harsh. And of course, my, my parents, well, fortunately, they didn't give me that kind of a pressure. Mm. But like how many people will choose to be in a certain relationship because they were told that's what they're supposed to do, right? right. right. And right. when it comes to sex, I mean, who told you how to do it? Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nobody or, nobody it, trustworthy told me how to do it. I can tell you that much. Exactly. <laughs> who, who got a proper education about it, you know? Yeah. Maybe just looking some magazine and, you know, porn and, you know, it just, that's it. I mean, no one, I mean, including myself until I got my sex coaching certification, I got a proper training about yeah. what is it? What is sex? You know, how to have it in the most pleasurable way. What's the purpose of it? You know, more than just a, you know, procreation. Yeah. I mean, no one's learning this thing. No. So, right. Yeah. No it, one's it, teaching it. No one's seeking it. Right. So right, exactly. You know, I mean, uh, 
I mean, I could, I, I just, my brain is just so full of, of, of thoughts around this. I mean, whether, if we're talking about sex, it's like, well, you know, if you don't like intercourse, something's wrong, right? Or, you know, or, or you know, the other parts are, are, are just extra. Well, that's not true. Some people are wired differently. Some people don't like intercourse and they like, they like another part of sex or, you know, and, and the fact is when you say it's time to get honest about what you want and don't want out of relationship, we're not just talking about the sexual part. Like we're talking about fulfillment, fulfillment for my romantic life. Do I even know what I want? Have I even stopped to look inside myself and say, I don't want to live that way, or I do want to live that way. And here's why I want to live that way. I understand why I want to live that way, you know, rather than just taking spoon fed societal education that misaligns with who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like because of the taboo labeling of sex, we don't even properly talk about it. Right. So all we do, most of us, all we do is like, Oh, I heard or read about this in the magazine. Mm -hmm. And this is probably how I'm supposed to be doing it. And I, you know, I don't, I don't get why this could be so fun. Or like, you know, like I I only know this this one way. And, you know, yeah. So like you're saying, we don't really think about what do I really want? We don't even think about it. You know, like, do I want a partner? Well, if I do, how many? Like, or like, you know, what kind, like, you know, is it like, I I really don't think, I mean, I didn't think much about that. Like I just, you know, when I was young, I, I thought that, Hmm, I kind of feel like I want to have children. I feel like that's in my future, you know? Uh, And then that, and I found someone who could be a good, you know, father of my children. Yeah. You know, that's different from, you know, I want a soulmate mm-hmm. or, you know, like I, I want a partner or like, it's very different. But, you know, we do it because society says, you know, I should get married if I want to have, you know, do this, do that. If you want to be successful. Right. So. All right. Yeah. So here we go. We're, we're, we're in the swamp. We're in this swamp of, of, of other people's information. Okay. We can't see because the water's cloudy. We don't know what we want. We're like, Oh no, I got to have a kid by the time I'm 30. I got to have this. I got to get married. I have this, right. We don't even know what we want. We only know what we've been conditioned to desire. Okay. And so how do we see clearly? How do you help people to understand what they want at the most pure level? Yeah. So um, it is, it is hard. It is challenging. It really is. And so, um, so for me that the way it worked, like I said earlier, that it took me, to look into the area that I was least willing to look at. That was the fastest way to do it. Um, and- um, Are you willing to share with us what, what, what area that was? Yeah, so beginning of that, my journey was to, to um, actually uh, go through a divorce, which I had this strong conditioning, that's not for me. No, I'm not doing it. No divorce matter. is unacceptable. Exactly, it's a failure. I'm not a failure, so I'm not doing it. You know, so that was one thing that was actually huge for me, um, the actually doing it. Um, and then he really had this feeling of it was a mutual thing, but I was not going to initiate because I had this strong condition. It is wrong to do it, especially because I have children. We have children together. Um, and then so when once I looked at it, and then did it in a way that I never thought possible for a divorce. I was like, oh my God. And then it made me feel so free. And when I say free, the mm, it's it's hard to 
describe how that felt. I felt for the first time mm, whole. Okay. Yes. And I feel like whole. And then I kind of have this feeling like I used to feel this way every day when I was a child. Yeah. But after a while, maybe I would say six, seven years old, I just gradually start to lose that feeling of whole and of being myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I, so just divorce is just one big thing that was just open, open up the, this, all this kind of a, it was like a lock of the jail that I put myself in. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so I opened the key, but it, it really had this feeling of, instead of like trying to open the key of the jail, it was more like I melted the jails away. Mm-hmm. It yeah. just, it disappeared. And then I was like, or like it expanded. The yeah. jail expanded. The jail was like right here, you know, just hugging my body. And I couldn't move and I couldn't feel. I didn't even know who I am to just kind of boom, expansion of the jail I was in. So there was a lot of loose, you know, like uh, bars and like, oh, I can just get out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just walk out. Yes. You know, that was the feeling when that happened. And then after that, I experienced so many other areas of like the things that I thought wasn't for me. And then realized, oh, my God, I actually love this thing. And it <laughs> Yeah. Every time I experience something, I said, no, 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 no. And then look into that. And I'm like, oh, my God, I love it. Yeah. And then every time it was like a boom. It's like a huge expansion of like, wow, where does this all this space that was available to me that I wasn't aware of it, you know? Yes. Yes. Um that feeling of yeah, that that um I guess that is the the power of truth. Mm-hmm. Um that is there. Yeah. But no one can give it to me. I can I'm the only one. Yes. If I am really willing to look at the truth in that way. Yes then it becomes mine Mm -hmm. but it's mine already but i can't use it that's that's the that's the power of like becoming honest yes and then looking into those areas that you don't want to admit about yourself (laughs) i'm the monster under my bed there is no monster (laughs) under my bed i'm the one that's waiting to get me i'm the i'm the 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 jailer that's holding me in my cell there is no jailer it's me you know I, i i i love thinking of it as the only thing strong enough to cut a diamond is a diamond No one can hold me back, but me, no one has the power to hold me back, but me, I'm the only one powerful enough. And so, you know, it's one of the most beautiful things that I, I, I get to work with, with clients. And I know that you do too. It's helping someone open their eyes and see that there's not a damn thing in the world that can stop you, but you, and if you felt stuck then the good news is there's no one else that I have to go convince to let me go. It's just you. Yeah. Only one. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely right. And it's one of those things that, you know, like a lot of people say, I want to be confident. You know, how do I become confident? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same thing that I feel like that the, it's really just you in the way. Yeah. You know, yeah. I yeah. am in my way. Yeah. Yeah. There was two- this- yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say there's this horror movie from the eighties called. Um, oh my gosh. The title of it is escaping me, but there's a babysitter and she's in, she's, she's in the house by herself where her, the kids are sleeping 
and um, she gets a threatening phone call. And uh, and the phone call frightens her very much. And she calls the police and says, someone told me that they were going to hurt me and the kids that I'm babysitting and I'm so scared. And the police says, oh, we're going to go ahead and research that call. Well, the phone call comes back and they say, ma'am, we're this is the police. The phone call is coming from inside your house. Ooh. And she realizes that the person who is threatening her is already in the house with her and the kids. So it's terrifying. You know, it's terrifying. Oh. But like, that's a great analogy for I terrify myself. The phone call is coming from inside the house, right? You say, oh, when people want to be confident, well, I'm the one that dared me not to be confident. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean it's easy, but it means this is an inside job. Yeah. And it all starts with stillness. It starts with love, stillness, love. That's my experience. That's my opinion. I wonder if you Mm -hmm. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, definitely stillness. And then I find that to be, it is much easier to experience the stillness when I'm not in the relationship. <laughs> relationship. <laughs> yes, yes, there you go. Yeah, and um, yes, so that's another thing, right? Like the this conditioning that we receive, like, you know, if you're not dating, if you're not, if you don't have a boyfriend, girlfriend, something is wrong with you, like for what, how long, how old are you? You know, right, Th- there is this thing and I, you know, uh, there was a time, well, let me think about it. Yeah, when I got married, I I wanted to have a husband to have start a children with, I mean, start a family with. But other than that, I actually don't think I was like, you know, in the need of like wanting a boyfriend because people thought, but I know a lot of people do. Um, and uh, I feel like that's that's one of the examples that, you know, I, you know, I've been partnered, I was married for 20 years and, uh, you know, and I have some partners, but I definitely don't have like the boyfriend or, you know, that, 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 that type of partner. So, and then there is actually, a, I really enjoy this mm-hmm. and, um, that there is a, the, definitely a, a, a benefit. It, it's not a benefit. It's more like, um, how do I call this necessity? Um, like even so this doesn't mean that if you are a partnered in relationship, you cannot have this. But I, but I feel like me as a person who have kind of adapted to be a married person, and in order to adapt myself, suppressed uh, my my myself. Uh, suppress my feeling my desires and then wants and not want so in that context I feel like it feels really good to be able to just really walk on myself be with myself be still with myself yeah um yeah instead of asking someone to do that with me which Mm -hmm. I think is (laughs) that's right it's an inside (laughs) job that's right yeah you know um I I want to I want to turn this really practical for a moment. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that you, uh, as well uh, work on, work on this with clients, but, you know, listen, we're talking about relationships today. We're talking about, uh, about being authentic when it comes to the, to the role that coupling or staying single, uh, plays in our personal growth and our spiritual development. And if you think, you know, what type of life you want. I want to be single. I want to be married. I want to be in an open relationship. I just want to date, uh, whatever it is. I want multiple partners, whatever the case is. Um, I wonder if listeners, if you can ask yourself, do I know why I want what I want? You know, this is such fertile soil to say, okay, I want to be married. Why? Do I want to be married? Let me just see myself clearly. And, 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 and here's specifically how I will walk through it with clients and Mariko, maybe you have other methods that you'd like to share too, but you know, it's about saying, what are my values? 
And if you if you have not done values exercises for yourself yet, just go online, Google it, and you can find lots of websites that have helpful articles or exercises on how to uncover what your values are. You know, spoiler alert, your values are not things, are not qualities, simply qualities that you respect. They are qualities that drive your subconscious response. They're automatic reflexes, okay? Everybody says, oh, my value is, is generosity or kindness. Okay, well, is your first reaction to situations generosity and kindness? If it's not, that's probably not your value. Maybe your value is adventure or maybe your value is exploration or maybe your value, you know, is, is, is growth or whatever the case. Okay. So do I know what my values are and what are the fears that are subconsciously driving me? Am I scared that I'm not worthy? Am I scared that I'm not good enough? Am I scared that I'll be abandoned? Am I scared that um, am I scared that that life is going to pull the rug out from under me? And if these fears are playing roles in your life, then it is worth your time, listeners, to look at them with your open eyes and say, "Is there a correlation between my values and my fears and the type of relationship I want?" Not that you're right, not that you're wrong. Let me just look. Is something pulling the strings behind the curtain that's making me think I want X when if I were really free, I would want Y? What are your thoughts on that? Mm, I love that. I, I love what you just said. Um, that's um, that's a great approach. And um, I love that about the fear thing. Uh, because I find that um, I, I definitely feel like, and then I used that the value thing. Um, and then um, that's actually when I uh, became clear about that I was in a wrong relationship when I was married um, because the values were not aligned. But actually your value, mention of values um, <clears throat> really brings up a very good point where I was receiving so much advice about stay together, you know, like a prolonged marriage, you know, like a marriage is a failure if it ends, like the longer the better, right? So we have this conditioning constantly. So whomever I turn to, except for my coach, <laughs> they come with this conditioning you know, or underlying belief or the value that before marriage, longer the better, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So all of the teaching I was, I received the great teachings to improve the marriage, improve whatever, 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 always come, make it long, make it last long, that the better, that the longer the better. But then my really taking a look at the, by my values and comparing my then husband's values, they were not aligned. And that was actually the moment where, oh, I actually am in a wrong relationship. This is not aligned. This is why it's not working. So <clears throat> it is such a great point. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that you say that. And then it's it's so important that you that people that people become extra crystal clear about what they value what they really really value as a person yes and yes. then to make sure that's aligned with the partner uh and if it's not aligned i would say that you know it's good that you found out about it you know yeah. and then you decide what you want to do with that that's right exactly right? yes yeah. you know pivoting just a little bit uh you and i talked about <laughs> traditional male female roles as we were planning the episode and this is not directly related to any type of sexual orientation it's larger than than the topic of sexual orientation but you talked about how there is such a missed opportunity for beauty when someone um boxes themselves in to a traditional male role or a traditional female role so if i'm a, a woman 
and I feel like I'm a naturally dominant person, I feel like I have to hide that and be submissive in order to be a real woman. Or if I'm a man, maybe I'm a naturally submissive man, but society tells me I'm defective if that's the case. So I have to always pretend to be a dominant man or I'm failing at manhood. And uh, I wonder if you have some thoughts on this beautiful missed beauty that exists when we allow our, uh, our authenticity to come through in our gender expression. Yes. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what you just said, um, what, what you just summarized about this, um, the traits of human that is contrary to this society's conditioning and, and in the of the uh, gender role, gender-based roles, <clears throat> for whatever reason, that really uh, hits me very close to my heart because uh, I myself identify as a very dominant mm -hmm. and very masculine woman, mm -hmm. but I'm also very, very feminine. Mm -hmm. uh, but someone who was afraid to embrace my feminine because I thought that if I am too feminine, then I'm considered to be weak, uh, like inferior to men. And then if I wanted to be successful in the business world, that didn't seem like, um, you know, advantageous for me. Right. right. So I hit that part intentionally all my life. <clears throat> you hit your it feminine is part. And you 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 leaned into the dominant masculine part, and you you hid the feminine part so that you would not put yourself at a disadvantage. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I did that intentionally, and then um, and I don't think people felt that I am a, a dominant or a masculine woman particularly, but I don't think they felt I am particularly feminine woman either. You know, and I always kind of you know, I really like the idea that I'm an androgynous uh, person who is highly masculine and highly feminine. Yeah. I just be honest that I, it was very difficult for me to be me as a woman. Yeah. Me as a woman, powerful woman, but not masculine powerful, but the feminine powerful. Yeah. Because I did not know what that means. Mm -hmm. And also, <clears throat> so, um, and also I was very aware of the fact that, you know, like I'm not, like I said, I never really felt like I was a typical um, woman growing up, even a typical girl, um, had a lot of male friends and, you know, in time, my entire life. <clears throat> and at the same time, uh, like uh, there are quite a few men who, um are just really not feeling identified as just dominant alpha male, even if they are not a submissive per se. I mean, there are some people who really identify as a submissive, but even if they don't necessarily uh, 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 submissive per se, uh, there is this, you know, masculine conditioning of like alpha male, like, you know, and then if you're not dominant or alpha, then you're not man enough. You know, there is a lot of stories like this. And I feel like we receive so many of these type of thing. And then for me as a woman, you know, um, a lot of women who are powerful in the business world or, you know, in a professional uh, world, if we are standing out, then we get this thing about, oh, she's bossy, you know? And I don't think men get this um, uh, uh, description of being bossy. Right. It's a what women get. Mm -hmm. So, and then a lot of women feel terrified of call, called uh, intimidating. I, yeah. I get that a lot. Um, intimidating woman and then I got I got that throughout my life and again I didn't really think too much of it but I know some women feel very person you know take take that um uh description very personally and then they they don't feel comfortable about that yeah. so this constant comparison of like you know what a woman should be if you're a woman 
the constant comparison of what a man should be if you're a man, whenever there is a gap between what we are fed, how we should be with a, a gender role, we kind of like not explore that part right. because it's uncomfortable. And so we just go, don't, go, don't go there. And then it's, it's much easier to just kind of say, oh, I just kind of be like this, you know, wear a skirt and, you know, be a girl, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so after I get a, a, a training as to uh, in the, so I went to this, um, I got this formal training to be a dominatrix that the, um, and then so when, when I did this, what was incredible to me is that the change in me and also like I'm able to see the beauty in people that I didn't see before. Mm -hmm. That it is not because it is not about, let's say the submissive men. Submissive man is more beautiful than not submissive man. I'm not saying it, but it's really more about really knowing who the person is. Mm -hmm. And then if that person is submissive, then owning it. Yes. And yeah. then um, just specifically the, the, the me experience, experiencing some missing men and then receiving their devotion and love as a dominant woman. Mm, I don't know how to explain this experience. Like I, that experience really taught me what I'm offering as a woman. Yeah that before this training, before this understanding, I probably would have felt very uncomfortable. No, 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 no. I don't have, I'm not that beautiful. I'm not that powerful. I'm not that sexy. You know, I, I, I don't think I was aware of what I had. Right, yes. But because of this training and an understanding and interacting with people who fully own the submissive parts, I was able to fully own my dominant part, which I couldn't do mm -hmm. in my, most of my life. Yes. And I thought, oh my God, I, so that was an experience of <clears throat> like very unexpected way of accessing that power by assuming it yes i have this yes yes i will take it mm -hmm. i will take, receive your devotion mm -hmm. you know and then i will receive your worship and this is not something i could ever imagine saying you know people yeah, worship even me. just verbalizing that can be shocking in our yes place. yes 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 i mean three years ago i cannot imagine saying something like this people worshiping me Right. No, mm -hmm. I would have felt very uncomfortable because I didn't feel worthy of such a thing, but I do now. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's not because I changed. It's because I realized that I actually have these things. Yes. There you go. And, yeah. You hold space for your entire self, right? Because we're no one is, well, not, I won't say no one, but very few people are only on one side of, of the coin, right? I'm not only dominant or only submissive. I'm not only masculine or only feminine. I'm not, you know, only desirable, de uh, desirous of being single or only desirous of being in a, a monogamous marriage, right? Like most of us fall somewhere in the middle on these continua. And like, and, and, and I think it's important to say, you know, I am, you know, if I were to look at myself, if I were to look at myself, like on the, on the continuum of masculine energy and feminine energy, I, I might fall on the masculine side, but really around 60 out of a scale of hundred, I'm not an 80 or 90% masculine energy person. And, and, and I think it's important to really say, okay, um, who am I? What makes me tick? What are my motivations? What are my fears? 
What drives me? And can I hold space to, 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 to love what drives me? And we all know the stories of politicians or other notable people who were caught in these compromising situations where they were getting their needs met that was in a way that was off brand for who they said they were. It's painful when we will not accept who we are, what we are, what we need, and then we have to skulk around like a little weasel to secretly get our needs met, you know, yeah. and life will punish us when we're not mm -hmm. authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. And then I totally agree with that. And then that's kind of when I kind of accidentally and then playfully, you know, put myself in a situation looking to these areas or to my way of being or parts of myself that I never considered for myself. That's when I realized that I was actually being punished using your words. Yeah. Yeah. For not using the power that I have so abundantly. Yeah. But hey, I didn't know. I didn't know being myself and then really knowing who I am and expressing myself gives me. Yeah, not like hiding or just secretly judging about it. Yeah. Um, That's it. Yeah. Mm. You know, I think this has been uh, such an interesting conversation and I... Uh, especially considering how rarely we're willing to talk about things like this out in the open. So I want to thank you for bringing that gift to Refractive and for sharing your wisdom and experience with us. If listeners want to learn more about what you do, how you help individuals live authentically, uh, how can they, how can they learn more about you? Well, yes, thank you for asking. So <clears throat> I do a one-on-one -on -one coaching and then sometimes I create uh, some group programs and workshops. Uh, you can get more information about my work uh, on my website. So it's www.mistressmariko.com. Mm -hmm. And also I, um, <clears throat> I post quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit. I'm going to post more regularly on uh, my Instagram that they, my Instagram handle is uh, Mistress Mariko. Okay, great. And that's M as in Mary, A-R-I-K-O. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Thank you yes. so much. What a, what a joy to have you with me today. Thank you for that. Thank you so, so much for having me. Everyone, as you go out in your day and you meet all sorts of people who are just doing the best they can, I hope you can remember to aim your light. Take care. You've been listening to Refractive Podcast, and this is Johnny G. If you found today's content uplifting, if you think it might make somebody's day better, give it a share on social media, click like, subscribe. All those things help to expand this podcast availability to new audiences. I'm a speaker, a coach, and a facilitator based out of Washington, D.C., but I travel a lot. If you think I can be of service to you or to your organization, help people get unstuck or move into their authentic power, shoot me an email. My email address is refractivepodcast at gmail.com. Take care. Thanks for listening and aim your light.